inside to take it out. Look at this. From deep in his own end zone. Up across the 20. Spin move at the 25. And he ends up picking up a few more yards than he would have. And it's hard to believe, Aaron, that that was 10 months ago for Purdy. And here he is again. Yeah, and Brock telling me that on the opening drive in last year's NFC Championship, he felt fine. His body felt like he could play. But he, when he went to throw the ball, he said his arm simply couldn't do it. And then it turned into a nightmare. A tough moment for him, for sure. He admitted to me this week, I'm excited for this game. How could you not be? He said, I know it's just another game, but it's big after everything that happened. He said, I know my injury happened for a reason. I asked him what that was. He said, I'm not sure yet. I'm waiting to see, Kev. And here he goes on first down, Purdy to throw it. Over the middle, it's tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. May have been Jordan Davis who got his hand on that one. He had an outstanding game last week. And so here is Purdy. Not only is he back and healthy, Greg, he's been arguably one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the league, the way he's performing. Absolutely. And this graphic right here, this sums it up. I can't stress how unique it is to have such a high completion percentage that you're able to lead the league, high percentage, efficient, but also lead in yards per attempt. That's the downfield explosive nature most explosive offense in the league. Second and ten. Purdy in some trouble. And Purdy is sacked. Hassan Reddick, Fletcher Cox got in there, and it's third and long. Yeah, and this is the key today. Sean Desai, the defensive coordinator, he told us this week, make Purdy go through his progression. Make him hold that ball one count longer. You'll see he went pump there to Debo. Cloudy picture. They have some of the best pass rushers in the league, both inside and on the perimeter. If they can make him pat that ball, they can get home. Third down and 12. Purdy has time. Going far side, incomplete. It was high for McCaffrey and a three and out forced by this Eagles D. This 49ers offense does not want that matchup to decide the game. Defense, great pass rush. There's some yards to be had in the secondary, but not in a drop back type of situation. They want to stay in manageable down to distance, run downs, play action. A lot better matchup today in the passing game, Kev, against this Philly defense than traditional third down drop back. Mitch Wisnowski to punt it away. Britton Covey back deep for the Eagles. He's got the most. Second possession starts at the 26. Ball is loose. Hurts picks it up calmly. Flush to his right again. No one's over there, so he has to throw it away. Every route was on the opposite side of the field, so it's second down. And you look at this Eagles team, Greg, and they're 10 and 1, and there's been a lot of talk about, well, they're they don't look good necessarily doing it, but there's also a resiliency in the way they find a way to win every week. Absolutely. I think sometimes in this league you can almost fall victim to your own success. You think back to what this Philadelphia team looked like last week. So, you know, last year, week in, week out, winning in such dominant fashion, that becomes the expectation. And the reality is you have to win some of these dirty games, these muddy back and forth where you're not at your best. And they've shown the formula for what that looks like, playing their best ball at the end of games. Blitz coming here on second down. Hurts in trouble. Now going the other way. There's no one there. He tucks it away and runs it. Hurts. Racing up near the pylon, he's up across the 30, or the marker, I should say. We'll see if they mark him out of bounds. As Gregory was in pursuit. Yeah, nice job there. We said Hertz is one of the best in the league at extending the play, but after Gregory's initial pressure, they, the ends have to set that edge. They can't let Hertz escape out the outside of the pocket, allow the interior defensive line to hold the interior lanes while the edge setters keep him contained in the pocket. Yeah, Hertz ran it 14 times in last week's game over Buffalo, including the walk-off touchdown. Play clock down one here. I think they realize. Hey, of Zacchaeus, we said what a tough matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Steve Wilkes has not shied away from man coverage with Ward, and so far, A.J. Brown's made the plays. Yeah, Ward made the play in the end zone to save a touchdown. Now Hurts in trouble, escapes again, looking, throws across his body caught. Devontae Smith right around a first down marker. Looks like they may put him down just a half yard short. So Smith will pick up nine. A.J. Brown is down on his knee there. And looks to be maybe okay. You know, it's interesting, Greg, he had that stretch where he was on fire, right? I mean, he had 
125 yards plus six straight games and then he was real quiet I said you know 45 yards total the last couple games and well he's come out swinging in this one already a couple catches 55 yards Boston Scott in the game in the backfield for the first time they give it to him up the middle a spin move and picks up a few you know we're talking to Kyle Shanahan yesterday and he said look you know, we got our hearts broken last game for them but I I don't mind guys feeling that way but I don't want whether we win to feel like oh we've arrived or whether we lose to be like we're devastated it it is in a way it's fun but it's another game go enjoy it it is and I think that's the biggest challenge especially late in the regular season of these kind of matchups it feels like a playoff game it feels like win or go home but the reality of it, it's not so you have to play like it is give it everything you got and understand Win or lose, there's a lot still ahead of you the rest of the year. Here's Swift in trouble, gets away from it in the backfield, and then gets decked at the 36-yard line. So it looked like it could have been a big game, but Drake Greenlaw, who hits about as hard as anybody in the league with that stop. Wow. <laughs> Remember we talked to Fred Warner, and we said, Fred, tell us about Dre Greenlaw. He goes, there's one thing I know. I, he goes, I try hard. I make, He goes, I try to hit like Dre. He goes, there's nobody in the league that hits like Dre Greenlaw. And, you see it week in and week out. He is their tone setter. He is their force on defense. And, and what a pair of linebackers they have here in San Francisco. Third and five. Blitz coming and hurts in trouble. Lost it for a first down. He's got Devontae Smith. His pressure was in his face. And the Eagles pick up another third. The motion across made them pass off the coverage to the two receiver side to the right. Watch the, the watch the coordination here, the defensive backs. That's how he's able to run that little sit route. Devontae Smith's able to get that little, you know, little switch release sit route at the first down against soft coverage, and it was just in time because he had a pass rusher bearing down right on him, Jalen Hurts. Eagles four or five on third down, their first two possessions. Hurts, time again, coming near side, and somehow got it through to Devontae Smith. It's another first down. I don't know how he fit it in there, but Smith's got another one. I thought when it was out of his hand, I thought D'Amador Lenore been playing a lot more inside slot corner. I thought he had a chance to pick it, but what a great ball location. Nice job there by Devontae Smith catching it with his hands and able to turn it up for a first down. Eagles have 123 yards on their first two drives of the game. See, Smith has heated up the last month. Hurts fires A.J. Brown, tries to cut in, but Fred Warner all over him. Brown's going to pick up five on first down. And Steve Wilkes, defensive coordinator, you know, along with the 49ers playing better the last three games, they acquired Chase Young. Steve Wilkes moved from the booth to the field, so I, th I think he's going to stay there. Yeah, he said he likes it. He said he likes being able to look into the eyes of his players, get instant feedback coming on and off the field. And he has some experience when he was the defensive coordinator a short time up in Cleveland years back. He called the plays from the field, so he's done both. He feels for this group of guys, he's better off on the field than he is up in the booth. Tenth play of the drive, a fake. Hurts. Tell A.J. Brown to go back the other side. Now he's in trouble. He slips it. It's a big sack. Javon Kinlaw, his first sack since 2020. Well, we talked that Jalen Hurts is not afraid to hold the ball. He doesn't mind the pressure. He's going to continue to buy time for his receivers. But great coverage down the field. Just nowhere to go. A.J. Brown on the outside. Devontae Smith with the Amador Lenore inside and you see him he's saying run to the left but no one and then he just loses his footing and that's about as easy a sack Javon Kinlaw will have the rest of his career I mean he's had a lot of injury trouble since they drafted him in the first round and he hasn't had a sack in three years but he gets a big one there to make it third and 21 four man rush hurts far side of the field has completion Gainwell and Gainwell is well short of a first down and so the field goal unit will come on again. So this has kind of been the craze here recently in the NFL is making teams go the long way. And you see why. It takes one negative play. It takes a penalty, a sack, a tackle for loss. And teams all of a sudden start settling for field goals. Both of these teams 
offensively are mining explosive plays. They want to throw the ball over your head. So far, San Francisco's done a nice job of making Philly go the long way, and as a result, two field goal tries. Here's Elliott from 39 yards out, and it's perfect. And we get a penalty flag, so let's see if this counts. Yeah, I think San Francisco might have jumped in the neutral zone. Field today, their offense is going to go a long way towards helping them do that. So we talked about Purdy back to the scene where he tore his elbow. Dominant left tackle. The rest of the offensive line, better perimeter run game, play action pass. That's when they're at their best. Send McCaffrey out in motion. They give it to Debo Samuel on the run. Samuel is wrestled down. Christian Ellis getting the start today because Zach Cunningham is hurt with a big tackle for a loss. Yeah, you see, they're just trying to change up run fits by motioning McCaffrey out of the box. And great job here by Ellis. He just sees it, pulls the trigger. And those run through linebackers, they have to be accounted for on these zone schemes. And this time, there's no one there to pick them up. Yeah, Cunningham out, who's a terrific tackler with a hamstring injury. So Ellis gets a big opportunity today. There he is. Here's Purdy. Pressure coming from Reddick. Sides away from that. Ball is tipped. And it is incomplete. Intended for George Kittle. Morrow had an opportunity at it. And it's third and long. And so far, like we talked about coming on to the show, KB, this pass rush, they are built to rush pocket quarterbacks. That is what they are at their best. There has not been a lot of easy, quick targets downfield in the passing game for San Francisco, and as a result, he's holding the ball. Third down, 14 to go. Pressure again. Purdy looking. Reddick chasing. Floats in. Out of bounds. And another three and out for this Philly T. And so far, coverage unit, the secondary that's been under a lot of fire here, not anywhere as dominant as they were last year when they led the league in pass defense. They have come out hot. Brock Purdy's been moved off his spot by this front, and it's worked perfectly. There has been nowhere to go with him in the second or the deep level in the secondary, and so far this Sean Desai defense here in Philadelphia has answered the bell. Wisnowski. Good high kick, and Covey is smoked as he catches the ball, but he hangs on. Womack on the tackle. So this Eagles defense had their troubles last couple of weeks, but come out red hot. Not across the 35. Jair Brown on that hit, as may take us to the end of this first quarter. Yeah, first two possessions, long drives by Philly, settling for field goals both times. Eagles have seven first downs, 49ers have six plays on offense. So that's how this first quarter has gone. And that will officially be the end. So all Philadelphia early in this one. Six nothing.